Hi there and welcome to another tutorial for Edexcel Further Pure 1. In this tutorial we're going to introduce the idea of proof by induction and I'm going to use proof by induction to prove some uh, sums that um, and formulas for sums. Right, as always let's take a look at the Edexcel specification to see what we need to learn. We are in section 6, we are doing proof and students must know proof by mathematical induction. There are four types of mathematical induction you need to know. Sum of series, finding general terms of iterative series, divisibility and matrix products. In this video I'm going to do summation of series. So you need to be able to, for example, prove the sum of our cubed formula that we have learnt or been told about in um, section 5 of the summer series. Or for example, here's a typical exam question, prove the following is true. Okay, what is proof then? What does it mean to prove something is actually true? Well, it's a it's quite a technical subject to get your head round, and it's it's very rigorous in, in maths. So by that I mean there are very tight procedures in order to prove something is true. Now, if you were doing a subject like science, say if you were doing um, some scientific research. Like you were trying to, let's say, prove that um, whenever you threw a ball up in the air, it, it came back down and fell on the floor. What All you could do as a scientist is test that hundreds and thousands and millions of times, and if each time none of your um, experiments showed that the ball kept going upwards, and in every case the ball actually fell down as you thought, that would be some sort of evidence to suggest that when you throw a ball up in the air it for, it comes down. However, that is called empirical evidence. That means evidence that you took from doing experiments. That is not a proof. You cannot be 100% sure that one time the ball will not fly off into the sky. You have not proved why the ball comes to the ground or um, that in fact it can it may never uh, it may not fly up in the air. You've just shown that in all your experiments um, the ball actually did fall on the floor. Now in maths you can't rely on empirical evidence. You need um, proof and proof is um, justification that something is true using uh, logic, formal logic, and basic axioms. And by axioms, I mean some fundamental truths that you assume to be true, and building upon these and using logic, you can prove that the thing you're trying to show is actually true. Now, I just want to show you the difference between empirical evidence and proof, uh, and how you know proof is a much more powerful thing. If we consider um, a French monk that lived in the 17th century called Mersenne. Now Mersenne worked on uh, what came to be known as Mersenne primes. He worked on a certain type of number that he thought was prime. And we're going to call this Mersenne prime m subscript p is 2 to the power of p subtract 1. Now it was thought that if p is prime, a prime number, then m to the p would be prime. And it was thought that was true. So for example, if you said p is equal to 2, then mp would be 2 to the power of 2 minus 1, which is 3. If p was 3, another prime, then m3 would be uh, 2 to the power of 3 minus 1, which would be 7, which would be prime. If p was 5, then m to the power of 5 would be 2 to the 5, minus 1, and that would be equal to 31, which is also prime. And so it was thought that these numbers would be prime. However, um, however, upon further investigation, it all seemed that's prime, that's prime, that's prime. So you could say, I've proved MP is prime. However, then it, c it came to uh, the fore that if you put P was 11, and then and you worked out m11, which is 2 to the 11 minus 1, which in that those days was a very hard and high number to compute and check if it was prime or not. Well, you got for this 2047, 
And of course, that's not prime because that could be written as 23 times 89. So although P, uh, 2, 3, uh, 5, 7 worked, P is 11 did not work. And so these numbers were not always prime as was thought. So just because it was working in several cases was not sufficient as a proof that MP was always prime. That's why in maths we need some formal, logical um, way of proving something is always true, not that, not just that it looks to be true in most of the cases we checked. And proof by induction is going to do that for us. And just before I introduce you to proof by induction, I want you to take a look at the following video clip of Domino's. Okay, I'd like you to think, how do you know, or how did all those dominoes fall? What caused all of those dominoes to fall? What were the reasons every single one of those dominoes actually fell? Now, hopefully, with a bit of thought, you may come up with the following ideas. In order for all the dominoes to fall, you have to push the first one. You have to give the first one a little nudge for it to fall. And then all the dominoes were set up in such a way that they were close enough to each other so that if the one before it fell, it would touch the one after it and that one would fall. So there were two conditions for all the dominoes to fall. And these are the conditions that we're going to sort of use for induction. You need a starting push. You need the first one to fall. And you need them set up so that if the one before it falls, if that falls, the one after it must then fall because they are as close to each other as that. And that is the principle of proof by induction. So the idea behind induction is as follows. You want to prove a statement is always true. That is what you need. You want to prove that something, a statement you think is always true. Now, if you could prove that it's true in one case. Imagine you could prove it is true in a particular case and that it must be true in the case immediately after it. So, i.e. the dominoes were close enough that when one fell, the other one after it must fall. And if you could prove the statement is true in the very first case, so that means you push the very first domino, you made sure that got pushed and it fell, then the statement would be true in the first, second, third and all cases. So we could apply the domino reasoning to um, maths. We could say that if we could show that the first case was true, and if we could show that all other cases, in all other cases, if the case before it was true, then the case after it must be true. As long as the first one's true, all the subsequent ones then uh, would be true. So that's the idea of induction. And furthermore, just a few points, you need a statement to test the truth of. So you need something that you are trying to test in order to do induction. Induction does not give you a direct proof. It doesn't tell you what the answer should be. It just checks whether an answer you think is true is actually true. So it's a way of confirming a statement is true. And there is a very, very clear way to writing a proof that I'm going to show you in the following. You must use the terminology that I use, you must write it and lay it out very neatly. There is no jumping steps with induction. There is a very formulaic um, way of doing it. So let's start off and do a proof by induction. In order to, to do one, I would just take down these notes of the steps and then I'm gonna go through the steps for a particular example. So it's very important that you know the steps. The first step is called the proposition. You write down the thing you are trying to prove. Okay, so effectively, you copy out the statement or the question you're trying to show. That's called the proposition. Then what you do is what's called the basis case. You explicitly check that the thing you're trying to show is true, is true for the first number that you're checking. For example, it's usually n is 1. You must check it is true explicitly, not assume it's true. Then what you do is you have the assumption section. You assume that the statement is true for some general number, um, for example, k. Always use k in the exam. You assume that the statement is true 
where n is k. You've checked this true for n is 1, you assume it's true for n is k, k is some whole number. The inductive step is the trickiest section. You have to show that if the result is true for n is k, then it must be true for n equals k plus 1. So you are showing that you are trying to look at the k plus 1 case and show it must be true using the knowledge and the assumption that it was true for n is k. And the last step is your conclusion. You must state that your general statement is now true for all the integers from your starting point onwards. And that's usually for n bigger than or equal to 1. So do take this down here as a, uh, how we are going to write all our proofs. And we're going to do an example. Here's example 1. We are going to prove by induction that the sum from r is 1 to uh, n of r is n, n plus 1 over 2 for all n bigger than or equal to 1. So, we're not going to assume this is true. We're not going to check it for n is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and say, look, it looks like it's doing well. It must be true. We need to prove it's true. Now, the first step, you will remember, is the proposition. You write proposition, step one, and you're copying out the question effectively so you know what you're doing. You are trying to prove that the sum from r is 1 uh, to n of r equals n, n plus 1 over 2 for all n bigger than or equal to 1. You're copying down what was in your exam question. Do do this, it helps keep track of what you're doing. Second, after your proposition, do you remember what you do? The second step is called the basis case. And you must check explicitly, okay, that this uh, the the um, proposition is true for the first number. Now you're trying to prove it's true for all n bigger than or equal to one. So the first number is one. So you let n be one. You check the left hand side, work out what its value is. You check the right hand side, work out what its value is. If they are equal, it's true in the n plus one case. So. You use the following, the left hand side is the sum from r is 1 to 1 of r, i.e. you're adding up the number 1 one time, you get 1. The right hand side, rhs, you put 1 in here, 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2 is equal to 1. So the left hand side equals the right hand side and the proposition is therefore true when n is 1. This thing here, this proposition holds for n is 1, the very first case, the basis case. OK, the third step. The third step is the assumption step. Now, you are assuming here. You are assuming uh, that um, this is true for uh, some number down the line. We're going to call it k. So we're going to let n equal k. And we are going to therefore assume that the assumption is true for n equals k. We're going to assume that this uh, proposition here is true for n equals k. That should be proposition. I.e., we're going to write down what that means. We are assuming that the sum from r is 1 to k, we are letting n be k of r, is equal to k, k plus 1 over 2. We are substituting n uh, k for n and we are assuming this statement is true we don't know it's true as such but we are assuming it is true that's the assumption stage effectively substituting k for n in the original proposition but you must say let n equals k assume the proposition is true for n is k and write down what that actually means okay the fourth step which is the most tricky is the inductive step okay now, the inductive step is as follows. Rem I'll just go back one second here, and I should state something, what we're trying to show in the inductive step. The in remember the inductive step, we're trying to show that if n, is, uh, if n equals k is true, if the formula is true for n equals k, then it must be true <clears throat> for n equals k plus 1. If it were true for n equals k plus 1, now, this isn't something you can write down as a fact. If it were true for n equals k plus 1, then the sum from 1 to k plus 1 would be k plus 1, substituting in here, k plus 1 plus 1, k plus 2, 
over 2. If, if the proposition was true for n equals k plus 1, that would be true. Now, we don't know that. That is what we are trying to prove. So this here, sometimes you might write that down, but maybe on a scrap piece of working. If we could use this knowledge here to prove this is true, then we have shown that if it's true for n equals k, it's true for n equals k plus 1. So we can't assume it's true for k plus 1. This is what we're trying to show in the next step, the inductive step. <clears throat> so we're on the inductive step. We are considering the case n equals k plus 1. And we are trying to show, as I said here, that this is true. We can't write it's true. We're trying to show it's true. So the sum from r equals 1 to k, uh, k plus 1 of r, is obviously the sum from r is 1 to k of r, and then you add the k plus 1 after. So you're breaking that sum up into sum from 1 to k plus the k plus 1 term. Now, by your assumption step, step 3, you know a formula for this. You know that this is true for n equals k, so therefore this is equal to k, k plus 1 over 2. And this thing here doesn't change, it's still k plus 1. Now what you could do is factorise the k plus 1 from both uh, terms. So factorising the k plus 1 out, we would get k over 2 plus 1. And tidying this up, maybe factorising out a half, dividing out a half, you would get k uh, plus 1 over 2, k plus 2. Now, this here, if you remember, was what we were trying to show in the previous page. We were trying to show this sum equals k plus 1, k plus 2 over 2. We have just shown that this sum here, using our n equals k uh, assumption, that it actually yields the answer we were looking for. And so, the proposition is true for n equals k plus 1. So, so far, what have we shown? We've shown this is true when n is 1. And we have shown that if it is true for n equals k, then it must be true for n equals k plus 1. So if it's true for the number before, it must be true for the number after. Since we've shown it's true for 1, it must be true for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and all the whole numbers. And that is our final step. The conclusion, we must state that if the summation is true for n equals k plus 1, then it is true for n equals, if it's true for n is k, it must be true for n equals k plus 1. Since it's true for n is 1, by induction, it is true for all numbers bigger than or equal to 1. Now, <clears throat> first time round, that might be a difficult concept for you to get your head around, so we're going to do a few examples. Do copy these out and make sure you're writing out your working absolutely fully. So, let's have a go at a slightly more complicated one. Prove by induction that the sum of our squares is a 6n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, for all n bigger than or equal to 1. First stage is we write down our proposition, which is effectively copying out the question. We are trying to show that the sum from r is 1 to n of r squared is equal to a sixth n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, for n bigger than or equal to 1. That's what we're trying to show. I'm going to call that 1. 2. I'm going to check it's true in the basis case. I need to first of all check that this here is true for n equals 1. So I'm going to let n equal 1. And I'm going to work out this side, the left hand side, check its answer. Work out the right hand side, check its answer. And check they are the same explicitly. So you do that separately. You say left hand side is the sum from r is 1 to 1 of r squared, which is just 1 squared, which is 1. The right-hand side, well, that is a sixth, 1, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1. You must explicitly show this. You can't just jump too many steps here. 1 times 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 6 is 1. Therefore, proposition is true. for n equal 1. So we've done the first two stages. Now we move on to the third stage. The third stage, you'll remember, is the assumption stage. 
this is where you let n equal k and assume the assumption is true. So you're going to assume that the sum from r is 1 to k of r squared is equal to a sixth k k plus 1 to k plus 1. So you're substituting k for n and you're assuming this is true. Now this is something you're gonna you might write down. You probably don't write this in your work, you write this on a scrap of paper. In the next stage, in the inductive step, this is what you're gonna hopefully show. You want to show this. You can't write this down directly, but you want to show this is true. And if you put k plus 1 in here, you get 2k plus 2 plus the 1, you get 2k plus 3. You want to show that's true. Okay, you would probably write that on a scrap of separate paper. That's your aim. If you could do that in the inductive step, you'd be done. You can't write it down as a fact. That is your assumption or your uh, fact for now. You're going to use this to try and show this. So the next stage is our inductive step, the tricky step. Stage four is inductive step. And you want to work out the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1. You're going to let n equals k plus 1. And you want to work this thing out. You're not going to substitute in here. You just want to work this thing out. And you want to work it out using sum from r is 1 to k, which you've got an assumption for. So you always break up these sums into the thing you know, or you have assumed, plus the leftover thing. Um, this would be broken up into the sum from 1 to k, and then you would have the k plus 1 term, which would be k plus 1 squared. You know what this is from step 3, the inductive step. This is equal to a sixth k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, plus k plus 1 squared, And now you can try and factorise. So what I would do at this stage, I would um, factorise out a k plus 1, because that's in both. And I would take out a factor of a sixth as well, just to tidy up the numbers inside. That means in this bracket here, you'd be left with k, 2k plus 1. And over here, you'd be left with 6k plus 1. And now it's time to fiddle around with this and see what we get. We get a sixth, k plus 1. If I expand that out, I get 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 1. So I get 2k squared plus 7k in total. Plus, so not plus 1, plus 6. And if I then try and factorise that, I get a 6k plus 1. This with a bit of luck should factorise as follows. Um, I think it probably factorises um, to as follows. Okay, and look, we've got a sixth k plus one k plus two two k plus three. What we were trying to show is that it was a six k plus one k plus two uh, two k plus three. We have now shown it, so therefore, by the inductive step, true for n equals k plus 1 as well. We showed this. We didn't write it down and assume it. We used our sum of from 1 to k to try and work it out and prove it. And we're on our last step now. Um, therefore, you conclude your conclusion. Step uh, 5. You say, um, if true for n equals k, then true for n equals k plus 1. Since true for n equals 1, you can now state that your sum from r is 1 to n of r squared is indeed a sixth n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, for all n bigger than or equal to 1, and you're done. 
And that is a proof by induction is in its entirety. It's quite a long process, okay, but it must be written out nicely as such. Okay, um, it's time for you to have a go. And uh, we're, we're actually, I'm going to go through a different type of example here, a slightly different type, and then you're going to do two yourself afterwards. So I'm going to do one more example just so we get in the swing of this, and then you can do uh, two yourself afterwards. So we're, going to, we're trying to prove by induction that this thing is true. So our proposition is that the sum from r is 1 to n of r, 2 to the power of r is equal to 2, 1 plus n minus 1, 2 to the power of n, for all n bigger than or equal to 1. So, step 2, basis case. Uh, we take the case n is 1, and we work out the left-hand side. The left-hand side would be the sum from r is 1 to 1 of r to r, i.e. you're working out this when r is 1, you get 2. The right hand side, well that would be 2, 1 plus uh, 1 minus 1, 2 to the power of 1. This here is 0, so 2 times 1 is 2. And then you can say therefore true for n equals 1. So your proposition here is true for n is 1. Now the third step was your assumption you're going to assume, you're going to let n equal k, some number, and you're going to assume this is true for that particular n is k. So what you're going to assume is true, you're going to assume that the sum from r is 1 to k of r 2 to the r is equal to 2, 1 plus k minus 1, 2 to the k. Okay? So you're going to assume that is true. Now remember, this doesn't go in your proof, but what you're trying to show in your next fourth step, you're trying to show that this is that this is true for n equals k plus 1 as well. So you're trying to show that this would be equal to this thing here, but with k plus 1 in it. So it would be 1 plus, if you put k plus 1 in there, you get k plus 1 minus 1, which is k2 to the k plus 1. You're trying to show that, okay, that's your hope but you can't write that down. That's our next stage, the fourth stage. So the fourth stage then is your inductive step. You are going to try and work out the sum from r is 1 to k plus 1 of this here. And you're going to use your sum from r is 1 to k to help you. So you're going to break this sum up into something you know a formula for plus the k plus 1 term, which would be, uh, if you put k plus 1 in here, k plus 1, 2 uh, to the k plus 1. Okay, now we know the formula for this because we've used an assumption in the, uh, in, in the assumption step. This here is equal to 2, 1 plus k minus 1, 2 to the power of k. And over here, we've still got our k plus 1, 2 to the k plus 1. Now we're going to have to try and combine these in somehow. I suggest that at this stage we probably multiply in the 2. So we've got a 2 plus 2 times uh, k minus 1, 2 to the k. Well I can multiply the 2 by 2 to the k and call it 2 to the k plus 1. So that would be k minus 1, 2 to the k plus 1 plus k plus 1 2 to the k plus 1. Now here's a, a, a little bit of a step here. I've got k minus 1, 2 to the k plus 1's, and k plus 1, 2 to the k plus 1's. I've got k minus 1 of something plus uh, k plus 1 of the same thing. So how many have I got in total? Well, I've got 2k of that thing. If I add that and that, k minus 1 plus k plus 1 is equal to 2k. Okay, so how many... 2 to the k plus 1's have I got? Well, I've, I've got this 2 here, but I've also got plus 2k 2, 2 to the k plus 1. 
And now I can factorise out this 2 here. This is 2, 1 plus k, 2 to the k plus 1. Okay, and going back to what I was trying to show, I was trying to show 2, 1 plus k, 2 to the k plus 1. That was my hope, and I've shown it, so therefore this is true. So this is true for n equals k plus 1. So, uh, final stage is your conclusion. What you can say is it was uh, if true for n equal k, then true for n equal k plus 1. Since true for n equals 1, you can now state that your sum from r is 1 to n, r 2 to the r is indeed the thing you're trying to show. 1 plus n minus 1, 2 to the n, for all n bigger than or equal to 1. And you've shown it. Okay, the, as you can see, these are quite long. I've got two for you to have a go at now. Pause the video, work through them, show all your working exactly as I've done in the previous examples, and hopefully it will make sense to you and you, you get the right answer. So here we go. Here are two for you to do yourself. In 10 seconds, I'll go through. Okay, let's go through these then. The first one, I'm not going to write each step down for you because you should be able to do the first, second um, and fifth one yourself because they're just basically copying. But what I will do is do the assumption step. The assumption step was let n equal k and write the following. You should have written... Okay, that was the assumption step. The inductive step was to let n equal k plus 1. This was the hard bit. And you wanted to work out the sum from r is 1 to k plus 1 of r cubed. You should have broken that down into the thing you knew and a formula for it. So you should have broken that down from the sum as r is 1 to k of r cubed. Plus the k plus 1 term in here, which would be k plus 1 cubed. And then you know a formula for this, it's above, that would have been a quarter k squared k plus 1 squared plus k plus 1 cubed here. Factorise out a quarter and a k plus 1 squared. You would have got left in this bracket a k squared and you would have got left in this bracket 4 um, k plus 1. Then you would have, if you were a bit of tidying up, you would have got that here would have been um, k squared plus 4k plus 4. And hopefully now you spot that this actually factorises to k plus 2 squared. Okay, now look, this here, this thing here that we've actually shown to be true is actually what happens when you put k plus 1 in here. A quarter, k plus 1 squared k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 2 uh, squared as well. So we have shown it's true in the case n equals k plus 1 if it was true in the case n equals k that we assumed. And you should have been able to write in your step 1, step 2 and step 5 from there. These were the two hard bits. These are always the hard bits getting your substitutions right. Next one I'll do exactly the same. I'll just write your substitution uh, and sorry I'll just do your assumption and your inductive step. Here you should have said let n equals k and then you could have said that the sum from r is 1 to k of 2k equals 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2. Now, uh, I'll just write this over here. What you are hoping to do in the inductive step, you would hope that the sum is 1, uh, r is 1 to k plus 1 of 2 to the r. You would hope it's equal to 2 to the, putting k plus 1 in here, k plus 2 minus 2. That's what you're trying to prove. That's what you write on a rough piece of paper. That's when you know you've done it right in the inductive step. So in the inductive step, you let n equals k plus 1. So you're trying to work out what the sum from r is 1 to k plus 1 of 2 to the r is. You're trying to work this out. You use n equals k. You use your formula for that. So you break this up in the sum from r is 1 to k of 2 to the r 
plus the k plus 1 term that you've taken out of this sum, so 2 to the k plus 1. This here, you know, is given by that formula, 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2, and this here is still 2 to the k plus 1. How many k plus, how many 2 to the k plus 1s have we got? We've got two lots of 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2. Um, 2, that using indices, 2 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of k plus 1 is 2 to the power of 1 plus k plus 1, which is 2 to the power of k plus 2. This is indice knowledge here. So this here you can write as 2 to the k plus 2 minus 2. And look, you got what you were hoping for, that bit of working that you wrote on a separate piece of paper. You actually showed it was true using your n equals k assumption. And again, you should have been able to write 1, 2, and 5 there on your own. Um, that was just copying stuff down. There was no need for me to actually go through that. It's not enough just to write this, by the way. You should have done stages 1, 2, and 5 on top of this. And that is that for induction and proof by induction to prove sums. I would suggest you now for extra work, read chapter 6, page 122 to 127, work through the examples, and do exercise 6a or... Do then tune in for the next video on induction um, and there will be three more on the various three inductions you need to learn. Thank you for watching.